Tim Lake is a young man from Cornwall. He grows up in a house by the sea with his father, James, his mother, Mary, his absent-minded uncle, Desmond, and his free-spirited sister, Catherine, who is known to family and friends as Kit Kat. Tim's parents host a New Year's Eve party every year, which Tim is not too fond of attending. At this year's party, he and his friend Jay clumsily stumble into a table, which spills drinks and bottles everywhere, even onto some guests. Kit Kat hooks up with a guy named Jimmy Kincaid, while a pretty young blonde woman shows interest in Tim. When everybody counts down to midnight, the woman leans in to kiss Tim, but he instead shakes her hand and wishes her a happy new year. The woman is visibly disappointed, while everybody else is kissing their significant others. At the age of 21, Tim is told by his father, James, that the men of his family have a special gift, the ability to travel back in time. This supernatural ability is subject to one constraint. They can only travel to places and times they have been before. James tells him to go into a dark place, close his eyes, clench his fists tight, and think of the exact moment he wants to go to, and he will find himself there. Tim goes into the closet in his bedroom to make this attempt. He does what James told him, and when he comes out, Tim is stunned to see he is wearing the same outfit he wore at the New Year's Eve party. He avoids bumping into the table, and when the countdown to midnight happens, he grabs the blonde woman and kisses her, much to her satisfaction. Tim returns to the present to express his astonishment to his father. After his father discourages Tim from using his gift to acquire money or fame, he decides that he will use it to improve his love life. The following summer, Kit Kat's friend Charlotte comes to the house in order to spend her summer with Tim's family. Tim is instantly attracted to her and at the end of her stay, decides to tell her how he feels. She tells him that he should not have waited until the last day, that perhaps if he had told her earlier, something could have happened between them. Tim travels back in time and, the second time around, tells Charlotte in the middle of the summer how he feels. In this instance, Charlotte uses the exact opposite excuse, saying that it would be better if they waited until the last day of her stay, and then something could potentially happen between them. Heartbroken, Tim realizes that Charlotte is not interested in him, and that time travel will not make her fall in love with him. After the summer, Tim moves to London to pursue a career as a lawyer. He moves in with a family friend named Harry Chapman, a grouchy playwright. He then starts work at a law firm and makes friends with a co-worker named Rory, who spends a lot of time close to Tim as he continues his search for a girlfriend. Six months go by, and one evening, Tim's friend Jay takes him to a restaurant where they are paired up with blind dates in a dark room. Tim spends the night talking to an American-accented girl named Mary while Jay is with her friend Joanna. Afterward, Mary gives Tim her phone number. Tim returns home to find a distraught Harry. It turns out that the same night as he met Mary, the opening night of Harry's new play, had been ruined by one of the actors forgetting his lines at a crucial point. Tim goes back in time to put things right, and the play is a triumph. After the show, having saved Harry's opening night, Tim tries to call Mary, but discovers that her number is no longer in his phone. By going back in time to help Harry, Tim chose a path in which the evening with Mary never happened. However, he recalls that Mary was obsessed with Kate Moss. By attending a Kate Moss exhibition in town, he is able to run into Mary again. He strikes up an acquaintance with her, but discovers she now has a boyfriend. Tim finds out when and where they met, turns up early, and persuades her to leave the party before she can meet her future boyfriend. On their date, Tim learns that Mary works for a book publisher, and they have another chat about Kate Moss. After dinner, Tim walks Mary home, and they kiss for the first time. She invites him inside for sex, which doesn't go smoothly the first time. Tim goes back in time to try again, which turns out better, but he tries once more, being more assertive and leaving both himself and Mary very satisfied. Their relationship develops in time, and Tim moves in with Mary. One day, Mary's parents come to visit from America. She warns him that her parents are very conservative and to not mention their intimacy. They arrive at the door and Tim foolishly blurts out that they do not have oral sex. Naturally, he goes into a nearby closet and back in time to undo this, and he has a meal with Mary and her parents, leading Mary to say that she loves Tim. One evening, Tim and Rory go to watch a play, and Tim notices Charlotte there with her friend Tina. After the play, Tim goes to say hi to Charlotte, and she introduces Tina as her girlfriend. This gives Tim the wrong idea that she rejected him because she was a lesbian, though she says that's not the kind of girlfriend she meant. After another attempt at first impression towards Tina fails, on his third time, time decides not to approach Charlotte. However, Charlotte happens to spot him as he is leaving with Rory. 
She chats him up and then goes to have dinner with Tina, only to come back moments later to invite Tim to join her while she ditches Tina. The two have dinner and then go back to her place. Charlotte begins to invite him in, but Tim sees where this is going and he tells her there is something he needs to do. Tim runs back to his apartment to find Mary sleeping. He wakes her up to propose to her, though she is too tired and half asleep to respond. He time travels to hire a jazz band to play music and approaches her more gently to ask her to marry him, and she says yes. Tim and Mary visit Tim's family to give them the news. He finds Kit Kat, who tells him she's been let go from another job. Over dinner, Tim announces to the family that he and Mary are going to get married, and they are planning on doing it soon as they are also going to have a baby. The family is overjoyed to hear this news. That evening, Tim and Mary start making plans, such as who Tim's best man will be and where they will spend their honeymoon. The day of the wedding arrives. Even though it starts pouring rain, everything turns out fun and enjoyable for the couple. During the reception, where Rory is the best man, he starts to give an awkward speech, leading Tim to time travel and pick Harry as his best man. Harry starts making rude comments toward Tim, which makes him go back to pick Jay. This is just as bad since Jay starts making crude sexual references, forcing Tim to just pick his father as the final best man. James ends up giving a half-assed speech, so James decides to time travel himself to give a much nicer speech, in which he states he's only loved three men, Uncle Desmond, BB King, and Tim. Not long after, Mary gives birth to her and Tim's first child, a girl they name Posey. They eventually move into a house of their own, even though Tim states they can hardly afford it, but he and Mary are happy nonetheless. One year later on Posey's first birthday, Tim's family arrives, but they are still expecting Kit Kat. There is a knock at the door, but it turns out to be Jimmy Kincaid. Tim asks about Kit Kat, and Jimmy says that he got into a fight with her, and she had been drinking earlier. Tim and Mary rush to the hospital to find out that Kit Kat was in a car accident due to her driving drunk. Tim Time travels to bring Kit Kat to his house before she drives anywhere. He takes her for a walk on the beach to confront her over her problems with Jimmy. He then admits his secret to her and brings Kit Kat into a closet to time travel back to the New Year's Eve party from the beginning of the film where she first met Jimmy. She is just as surprised to find herself in her old clothes as Tim was at the beginning. Tim holds Kit Kat away from walking to Jimmy and they see him approach another girl. Kit Kat realizes what a jerk Jimmy is, and she goes over to him to punch him square in the face. Tim takes Kit Kat back to the present, and her memory has been altered, so she tells Tim that she is now with Jay. Tim is pleased to see that Kit Kat is happier with Jay, and he goes back home. When he goes to play with Posey, he is shocked to see that his daughter is now a boy. Tim Time travels back to the day of the child's birth to meet his father. James tells his son that because the child was born in between the time traveling Tim did with Kit Kat, he altered the timeline so that he instead had a son. Tim realizes he must undo Kit Kat's new timeline so that Posey is born. Kit Kat still suffers the car accident, but Tim and Mary stay by her bedside until she vows to break up with Jimmy and maintain her job. Before he leaves, Tim tells Kit Kat that Jay has always had a crush on her and that she should talk to him. Sure enough, Posey is still there and Tim plays with his daughter. He tells Mary he wants another child, though Mary doesn't want to go through the process again. Despite this, they have another baby, this time a boy named Jeff. One evening, Tim and Mary are going out to have dinner with Mary's publisher. As she goes through a bunch of dress changes for the dinner, Mary asks Tim where Posey is, and he tells her he left her downstairs. Unfortunately, he left her with the publisher's manuscript, which Posey colored over in crayon and put through the paper shredder. Mary is furious, and as Tim tries to walk out so he can undo this via time travel, Mary does not let him leave. The phone then rings, and she answers angrily, then apologizes when she finds out it's Tim's mother. She passes the phone to him, and Tim's face becomes worried when he speaks to his mother. Tim and Mary go with Kit Kat back to the family's home in Cornwall. Uncle Desmond tells Tim that James has lung cancer. He adds that on Tim's wedding day, when James told Desmond he loved him, that it was the happiest day of his life, and now learning of this news makes this the worst day. Tim meets with his dad, and learns that he has merely weeks left. He admits that he's been time traveling a lot to give himself more time to spend with his family and to read a lot of books. Tim narrates that his father gave him a two-part plan to enjoy his life. The first part is to go through a day normally as it plays out. We see Tim going to work, watching Rory get chastised by their boss, going to get lunch, and going to a courtroom case with Rory that turns out to be successful. 
living the day with the stresses he ought to face. The second part is to go back in time and relive the day again, while embracing it for what it is. He relives that day with a more upbeat feel, even allowing Rory to enjoy the day. The day comes for James's funeral. While everybody is getting ready, Tim Time travels to a moment with his father, letting him know that he is arriving from the funeral. He sits down with James to listen to him read a passage from a Charles Dickens novel. Sometime after the funeral, Mary tells Tim she wants a third child. He is reluctant at first because he will not be able to visit his father after the baby is born, but eventually agrees. After visiting his father for the following nine months, Tim tells James that he cannot visit him anymore. For the last time, together, they travel back to when Tim was a small boy, reliving a fond memory of them playing on the beach, and afterwards have a heartfelt, tearful goodbye. Mary gives birth to another baby girl named Jo, and Tim accepts his father's death. Kit Kat and Jay have also gotten married and had a child of their own. After reliving each day, Tim comes to realize that he may now live his life without time travel, as it is perfect the way it is. He kisses Mary as she lays in bed while he goes to take his children, now slightly older, off to school. The movie ends with a brief montage with most of the other characters, Rory, Harry, Tim's mother, Kit Kat, and Joanna, enjoying their lives one day at a time. And with that, the movie ends. We hope you enjoyed our video. Watch the next recaps on the screen, and don't forget to subscribe for more amazing recaps. See you in the next one.